Hello friends, welcome back. Today I'm talking about double bind manipulation. And I wanted to do this video because I recently did a video on insults and how toxic people insult you. You can check out that link for it there. And underneath that video was a comment that said, my parents insult me if I do good things or bad things, even if I do nothing. And that is so typical of toxic parents, of narcissistic parents, and it's called the double bind. So today I wanted to talk about what the double bind is, why they do it, but I also want to talk about four different ways it's done. And the reason that I think it's important to understand how it's done is so that you can start noticing it. When you don't notice what they're doing and why, you're so close to the problem that you don't realize what's going on. You don't realize that you're getting sucked in to a drama battle. You're getting sucked into coercive abuse. Okay, so we're gonna talk about that today. So for those of you that don't know me, my name is Michelle. I'm a life and relationship coach. I'm also the founder of the Thriver School of Transformation, which is a monthly membership dedicated to helping people to overcome narcissistic abuse and complex PTSD. If you're curious about the school, you may wanna check out the seven day free trial that's right there. So Click that link if you want to come check us out for seven days. Okay, so let's get into the double bind manipulation. Okay, so the bottom line as to why, whether it's a parent, whether it's a significant other, a boss, a friend, why people use double bind manipulation, it all boils down to the same thing all the time, and that's control. Okay, narcissistic people, toxic, malignant narcissists love to control everything. So let's talk about the four different ways that they use the double bind. And I know you're familiar with one of the ways, which is the comment that was made, right? That, that's the damned if you do, damned if you don't. Nothing you do is, is going to result in a positive reaction from them. So for example, um, you go home after school and the parents like, why are you home so early? You know, you, you, you never spend time with anybody. You never do anything outside of the house. You're here all the time. You're in my way. So the next day you stay with your friends and you're actually happy about it, right? You get home and you get the exact opposite response, which is why didn't you come straight home? You know, you're always, um, putting time and attention into things that are less important. You should be home. You should be doing this, that, and the other thing. Now you're thinking, okay, what's going on? If I do this, they get mad. If I do that, they get mad. So the next day you don't even go to school. Okay. And now you get in trouble for not doing anything at all. That's an example of the double bind in a relationship. It's like, um, let's say you had a long day at work and you're taking some time to read, right? You're taking some time to just relax and kind of unwind and you're yelled at because you're being selfish because there's so much that needs to be done. Why aren't you doing this? You know, you're always just doing things for yourself. You're so selfish. There's so many other things that need to be done. Said consistently, now you're no longer reading ever and you're always busy, busy, busy. And the next message is, oh my God, you're always on the go. You never relax. You never just sit and relax. You don't even take time to read anymore. It's so stressful to be around you because you're always, you know, doing something. I can't feel relaxed around you. So now you, you're stopped reading, right? You've stopped reading and now you stop doing things around the house. And now again, because you do nothing, it results in a negative. That's the double bind that we are most familiar with. Okay. And what happens is, especially when it's repetitive, when it is repetitive, basically you start to live life. You actually, you're not even living life in, in a sense, right? You are literally in a hamster wheel of trying to figure out what it is they really want. Whereas if you step back, you realize that what they really want is for you to be upset, feel as if nothing you do is enough, which creates learned helplessness, and they don't want you to have trust and confidence in yourself. That's the whole point of the double bind. They're not looking for you to find the solution that makes them happy. That's what you think they want, but it's not. They like the double bind exactly as it is. Okay, so let's talk about three other ways they do the double bind. And I want you to reflect on your life and see if these are ways that you didn't even realize you were facing or dealing with the double bind in your life. 
let me know in the comment section. Another variation of the double bind is when you are chastised or punished for a correct perception. Okay, so for example, you know how your parent is behind closed doors. It's like they walk through the door and they hang up their, their beautiful personality, uh, the one that they show others that they have as if it's a coat, right? And they're a completely different person at home. Maybe they're extremely violent. Maybe they're abusive. Maybe they are just super unkind and unloving or all of the above. And you're around people. And let's say um, everyone's talking about how great your parent is, right? Your parent, they're, they're known for being the most amazing parent. And the reason for that, and this is what children of narcissists don't realize, especially the scapegoat. What children of narcissists don't realize is that narcissists don't show what they show to you. They don't show that to other people. So that sets you up to not be believed by other people, first of all. But on top of it, let's say you have somebody that you share the truth with. Okay. And the narcissistic parent finds out you will be punished and chastised by the parent for spreading lies to people. You might also be chastised by the person you're talking to because that person is not seeing the same person that you're seeing. That's the hard part. So they have a different reality than you have. So you're sharing this, they're denying your reality and they're making you feel horrible for having it. So they might say something like, you know, your parent is so nice. Like, why would you think that way? You know, maybe you're not appreciating them for who they are, or, you know, you're just being um, too sensitive or you're not looking at it the right way. Maybe it's you. Somehow you get a negative response to your accurate reality, whether it's from the toxic person or from their flying monkeys who they have also under their spell. So what happens with this form of manipulation, if it happens in childhood, you lose touch with your reality, with your ability to size up a situation. And you wind up spending a lot of time in life, in your adult life, thinking about how you should interpret that. You'll see somebody's actions and you'll get that gut instinct, but instead of trusting it, you'll be thinking like, oh, well, maybe it's because of this, maybe I'm just being too sensitive and maybe this, or maybe that. And you're not connected to your inner wisdom and your gut instinct because your reality was constantly twisted and turned. And whenever you actually were right, you were chastised or punished for it. The third variation of the double bind manipulation is when you are expected to feel things that you don't. And then you're incited to feel guilt for not feeling those things. So let's say that you are the scapegoat in the family, right? And you're treated bad. You are constantly being criticized. You're constantly being dumped on. You are constantly being blamed for all the problems in the family. And maybe you're not exactly happy to be around that parent, right? It's understandable. But the parent makes you feel as if there's something wrong with you for not feeling happy to be around them. This you'll see a lot when a parent takes out their narcissistic rage on, on a child. And this could be with a couple as well. So the narcissist takes out their rage and you're upset, right? Now you're upset because you've just been abused. You go to an event and you're at the event and you're not happy, but you should be happy in the eyes of the narcissist because you are blessed with their company, right? So, because you're not feeling what they're saying you should be feeling, they make you feel bad. They make you feel like there's something wrong with you for not feeling happy to be around them, for not feeling um, happy to be with family. Okay, and I see this a lot in my coaching with people that are in relationships where the spouse is treating them bad, criticizing them. And when the abused person pulls back and isn't happy, then the abuser says things like, well, see, you're always pulling back. You don't make me feel safe. You're, you don't um, trust me or you don't feel this towards me. And here's the crazy thing, because at that moment when you're wanting to pull back, they will say things, their words and their actions are never on the same page, but they will say things that are confusing. So they'll say something like, you know, 
I give so much to this relationship. It means so much to me. And you're not willing to do your part. Now, forget the fact that they just abused you. Forget the fact that you're upset because of the abuse. You're not doing your part. And what happens in that case is that you wind up feeling a tremendous amount of guilt, right? Because then you start thinking, oh, wait a second. Do they really think this about the relationship? Am I the one that's not giving my part? And because it causes a lot of confusion, you start to feel a lot of guilt. The last way narcissists use the double bind is through demanding and prohibiting all at the same time. So for example, so let's say you are playing a game, right? You're, you're on a sports team and let's say in your house, honesty is like held in the highest regard. Okay. You're expected to never lie. In fact, if you lie, no matter what kind of a lie it is, there's extreme punishment, but you're playing the game. And in order for you to win, there was a way that if you lied, you could have won. So in a double bind like that, if you lie, you will be criticized in your house for being a liar and not being honest. If you don't lie and you don't win the game because maybe your parent wants you to win at all costs, right? That's the message. Don't lie, but win at all costs, then you're chastised as well. In other words, it doesn't matter what you do. Something negative is going to happen. If this resonates with you, Okay. I want you to understand that this has nothing to do with you, that you are not doing anything wrong and that there is not something in you that makes you unlovable and unable to please another person or a parent. I know that's easier said than really believing, but anyone that engages in any of these four double bind manipulations are trying to control you. It's all about control. In my next video, I'm going to talk about how to break free of all double binds so that they no longer affect you. It'd be awesome if we could stop the other person from doing the double binds. I don't have that kind of power, neither do you, but you do have the power to break free of entering their drama cycles, the, the web of toxic manipulation. You can stay in your own energy and you can learn how to build your self-esteem and how to be happier despite how they are. And if you feel like what they've done has affected your self-esteem and your self-image this month for the month of September in the Thriver School of Transformation, we are deconstructing the self-image that narcissists force on you. And we are strengthening our authentic selves. If you want to join us for the month, um, please check out the link above. It allows you to have seven days free. And let me tell you, it is absolutely amazing to watch people grow, to shift out of the old mold that they were forced into and to watch them thrive despite their parents, despite a significant other that was abusive, to watch them thrive is absolutely inspiring.